We're here at OFC and we're talking about the future of coherent detection in optical networks. I'm here with Kyle Hollish. He's a uh, marketing director with Nokia. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just to set the context, you know, the coherent era we've been in for quite some time. Um, if you look at the evolution of WDM networks uh, in the 1990s, kind of around the end of the 2000s, we were really hitting a, a limit in terms of channel counts and then this thing, coherent detection, came out at that point and um, enabled uh, you know, a whole new round of uh, optical innovation in increasing the spectral efficiency, basically, yep. of DWDM <clears throat> networks. So you had WDM plus coherent. Uh, that started around 2010 with the uh, commercialization of 100G. Nokia was a big part of that. Yep. And uh, so here we are about eight years uh, on. Coherent's done quite well, but um, we're kind of entering a, a new phase with this probabilistic Constellation yeah, Shaping, yes. a big announcement here from Nokia. Can you just um, you know, maybe talk a little bit about what PCS is and sure. uh, how it fits in the context of Coherent? Sure. Yeah, if, if we look back at that, you know, it's almost a decade when you think about the field trials that were happening with, with 100 gig. And uh, there, there's really been a continuous improvement in generations of DSPs from that very first, you know, 100 gig single carrier, QPSK, there's been two vectors of improvement. One is just increased spectral efficiency, increased capacity with things like high order modulation uh, and, and high baud rates, and then also increased programmability. So the first coherent interfaces basically did one rate, one reach. And so there's been, there's been steady improvement you know, throughout, throughout this decade. And, uh, and what PCS does is it's, you know, it, 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 it's really an entirely new way to map you know, bits onto symbols, onto the fiber. I, I like to say we're, uh, we went from playing checkers to playing chess a little bit. It's, it's, it's an additional level of sophistication. And uh, those two vectors, it almost takes to their conclusion. The, the one vector being maximum capacity, because mm -hmm. PCS gets us to essentially the, the Shannon limit of spectral efficiency, regardless of what reach. Uh, and the second is that programmability vector. So uh, can, we, can we pick the optimal uh, balance of rate versus reach no matter what distance we're at. So it kind of, it, it's the last piece of the puzzle really for those two things that, mm -hmm. that we've been shooting for for the last 10 years. So if you look at kind of the, the evolution of coherent over those years, this is kind of putting it into the, the last phase of, of what could be done for innovation for coherent specifically. I, I think, yeah, specifically with programmability and spectral efficiency. I, I think coherent will continue to evolve with things like higher baud rates. Well, yeah, yeah. Was, so, yeah. exactly. So now we, uh, we have carriers up to 600 gigabit per second, and that's really a function of the fact that we're now in the 60s in terms of baud rates, right? Okay. 62, 64 gigabaud. And that'll continue to increase, and, and there'll be benefits associated with that. However, when it comes to spectral efficiency and it comes to programmability, I think we've reached uh, essentially the apex of what. Of so what, what about the the the, uh, the qualms? So the, you know we went for 64 qualm. Did this kind of qualm metric uh, go away at this point, or do we move to 128 and 256? There, or? Yeah, there, there could potentially be benefits of uh, uh, of higher qualm constellations in very short, very high spectral efficiency DCI applications. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're we're talking the the sub 80 kilometer type okay. of type of range. So that, that's another vector of improvement in addition to higher baud rates that we'll continue to see. Right. Uh, but for the vast majority of applications, say from that 100 kilometer all the way to sub C, uh, you know, we, we've really maximized that at this point. Right, so I mean, there's a lot of uh, hero experiments that go on at OFC, uh, the show is quite famous for that. As an analyst, you always have to look at things in terms of not just what can be done technically, but yep. what can be done economically. It was alluded to at the um, announcement yep. yesterday at your booth. Talk about uh, cost per bit. I mean, are, are you? Is, how does PCS help enable the lowering sure. of? I mean, this is really a sure. fundamental. Yeah, mission I mean, of uh, you're right. Our, our customers absolutely have to keep pushing down cost per bit because because traffic is just growing so rapidly, mm -hmm. somewhere between 30 and 60 percent, depending on who you are, which means you're doubling every every two to four years, and. You know, spectral efficiency and increasing the capacity of your fiber, you know, by definition, can can lower the cost per bit. Right. And and also all those in between distances where we were leaving a lot of bandwidth on the table. So if you think a two, think about 200 gig going roughly a thousand kilometers and 100 gig going three to four thousand kilometers, mm -hmm. there's a lot of routes out there that you had to run at 100 gig uh, or, or, or 150 gig because uh, uh, you needed that to close the link. Whereas now you're going to be able to get a lot of gains in capacity by being able to tune to exactly the distance of mm -hmm. your uh, of your link, and I think just by by increasing 
the, uh, 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 the data rate uh, on fewer interfaces, because now that we have higher speed interfaces, you actually need fewer lasers, fewer modulators, fewer line cards. That's going to that's gonna drop cost per bit, and actually overall TCO, because you, you've got, once again, less hardware, right. less power, and uh, that, that'll be a big benefit. Right, right, and those are all important metrics. Another thing that, uh, in, in my research, uh, specifically I look quite a bit at, at automation and how that's mm -hmm. playing into optical networks. Is there any kind of a, a tie-in for programmability and automation for, for PCS or just this evolution of, uh, of coherent chips that are coming yeah, out? This is actually a very strong tie-in to, uh, uh, to auto automation and programmability in the sense that the traditional way to adjust rate versus reach with discrete QAM interfaces was to adjust the baud rate on one hand and different QAM uh, modulation formats on the other. And that actually was a little bit complex because you had to change your engineering rules. Uh, different baud rates require different channel spacings. Mm -hmm. With PCS, it allows you to use a single baud rate and a single 64 QAM modulation format and use what's called a shaping factor, which adjusts the amount of bits per symbol within that constellation. And what that does is that gives your, your infrastructure, it's very automation ready, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's simple, it's easy to use, it's consistent, and so whatever, whatever uh, software you're going to write on top of that to automate your network makes that job much easier. And not just the software, but the, the engineering and the planning and the operations of the network. So yeah, we see PS, PCS as a big uh, factor in that. Right, yeah, and certainly that trend's going to continue for anything in optics, it really needs to tie into programmability at, at exactly. some level going exactly. forward. So it's good that this fits. Yep. Uh, I guess last question I'll, I'll ask and uh, maybe put your uh, analyst hat on uh, sure. for, for a moment. Um, so coherent, we had several eras, TDM, WDM, coherent. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of reach as we talk about the, the final chapter of what can be done. What's, 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 what's next? next? What's, what's the next, next era? Yeah, I'll put my Bell Labs hat on I here. That's I guess, a good right? hat as well, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, coherent obviously isn't going away. The question is, is, is the uh, the economics of continuing to invest in new coherent technologies versus looking at, at other, uh, other avenues for expanding capacity, right? Mm -hmm. So one that we're already seeing in the industry is uh, adoption of additional bands, so L-band. Right. You know, Nokia's been shipping an L-band system for several years now and, it's, and it's, it's widely deployed, and you're seeing that now become more widely, widely adopted. And, uh, and then even looking beyond the L-band, there are other usable bands in fiber. There's the S-band, which is below the C-band. And so there's, there's another uh, two to three, maybe four X capacity that we can get out of additional bands. And that's, but that's going to take some innovation in things like silicon op optical amplifiers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then looking beyond that to even greater than a three or four X improvement is uh, spatial division multiplexing. And that's an area of active research uh, here at OFC and, and at Bell Labs, whether it's multiple modes within a single single mode fiber, whether it's multi-core fibers, uh, I think that'll be really the, the next the next frontier. Sounds like there's a lot of life left in, in optical fibers, which is there is. We'll be we'll us. be busy here at OFC for the next decade. All right, all right look forward to it. Good <laughs> talking right. to you today, Kyle. All right, thanks. Good to talk to you, Sterling. Bye.